Shall help those who live in the ghetto and no have no friend. Wake up in the morning without a cent to spend. Ah, so we go when you know how to be friend. Ah, so we go when you know how to be friend. You run to your neighbor if he have something. When you take a strap and don't have a need to spend I ask them so we go We do not have a big friend So we go We do not have a big friend You hear? No man is an island And only the strong survive I say like fighting to stay alive Every year you say So we go When you know how to be friend So we go When you know how to be friend Lord Kitchener. 
than a few, you know, because these people are great in their own field. Mario Lanza, Ray Charles. So, in a Jamaica at them time now, who are the producers at that time? What who is the producer? Before I started recording, I remember you had um, Stanley Motor, remember you had Chins. All the guy who record night food and them people. Eh? And um, when the industry really got big, like started, it was um, it was Island Records, this black well. It was people like um, Spanish story that they recorded um, worried over you Edward Siaba I mean that's my first record was with Edward Siaba with the producer at that time before he got into politics what kind of producer was Edward Siaba? was he a good producer? yes he was to me to me up to date is my best producer was my yeah, best producer I think you should. <laughs> Alright. Now, in those days, when man just started making music at Jamaica, what was the music scene like, for real? Well, most, most of the singers at that time were really into love and light type of music. I was the first person in that time was really doing things in the in regards to my surrounding, my immediate surrounding, I write songs about my experiences, my, the people around me, and they call it protest singing. You know, so I, I became like a man where really call them call it confrontation, tough kind of music. You know, because people don't who like hear that kind of music, dealing with the experiences, the injustices, and all that. Recording in that time, before even the recording started. I say, hey, hey. Music to me was like, it was going in the right direction in that it was accepted, not on a commercial level, because really, I'm sure the middle class and upper class people never really accept what was coming from the ghetto. And our support was really from people who, few upper class, few middle class people, are and fun, not much. Most of the people who really love the music couldn't really buy music, couldn't buy records. So it's just live show that the music, early musicians could have really make a living from most of the time. Now, in you know that period, right? I did one of the first man who didn't really work with Bob Marley. Is it because of the type of music we used to like how that it happened? How did it come up so you meet Bob Marley and start work with it? No, Bob Marley, meet me. Yeah, tell me that. Bob Marley was not named in that time. We know that. Was not it was named. I, I, I want to be, to be honest with you, Bob Marley is the, is the end of a phase, a certain phase, Bob Marley is the end of it and as a matter of fact that is where most people entered into the history of the music, at the end of Bob Marley, at the beginning of Bob Marley, but you had people before Marley, I, I really show Marley a lot of things, I taught him to sing, I taught him to play the guitar, Marley's first song was not with the Wailers, it was at a solo and it was one cup of coffee and the record is for, for Beverly's. First time Marley went on stage was at Queen's. Like he, we ran, he won a prize of two pounds. I was on an opportunity of a contest there, Queen's Theatre. Now it took me like about three to four years dealing with Marley and the whalers in general. We had Peter Touch, you had Bonnie Wheeler, you had Bob himself, you had two girls, three girls. You had one named Beverly Kilso, one named Sherry, I don't remember her surname. At one time, and another girl by the name of Blossom Johnson, who we called Timmy. All these people sing on, did the first, the first record named Simmer Down, with the, the Wheeler's first recording was Simmer Down and all those people were like was seven of them. 
spell the name where that comes from? Well, I, I, I thought the concept I had when I was teaching the way that's a thing was that every man ought to be capable and able to get account of himself. And we would, you know, you, you don't, you, you would be able to tell which person that I call on to come forward and take a solo. And it was like wailing, you know. So we, we started singing nice and wailing, singing from the bottom and stuff. So we called the wailers. And that's how the wailers came about. The name was to, to wail, to be able to sing and wail. Now this word reggae, when is the first time you hear this word reggae and who you know come up with it? Well I tell you now Stafford, that the music is well than, was well than the name. When reggae started it had no name. Because it, it, it is from amateur musicians, like we said, who were, weren't really acknowledged musicians. And we played a guitar, because I was one of the first guitar bangers, you know, to really strum a guitar to keep a tempo. And reggae, we didn't have a name for it. The, the music itself was older than the name. People like Toots, all those people came that they were the ones who created reggae. But where the name came from, I would be able to tell you. You know? But if the, the, the music itself was older than the name. 